Hello, everybody. Hello. Well, My name is Paul. Welcome, one and all. Welcome back to King's Quest VI, part two. All right, so we haven't really discovered much. We know where we are. We know something is a bit awry in the land of the Green Isles. We talked to Ali. He gave us some really good ideas about uh, getting around and talking to the ferryman and everything, but we haven't done much else here. Um, who is this uh, black-cloaked gentleman with the mischievous glint in his eye? Good day, sir. The mysterious old man just ignores Alexander. Hey. Good day, sir. The mysterious old man just ignores Alexander. Smile more. I'm just going to stand here until you notice me. Hello. You're looking at me? I'm looking at you. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. So what you... Oh. These shelves hold a collection of oddly titled guidebooks. Alexander notices such books as How to Become King with Little or No Rupees Down, Finding the Right Girl with the Right Dowry, and Why Good Princesses Like Bad Wizards. Ah, well, kind of funny little titles, but a bit telling. Assorted travelogues and biographies are arranged on these shelves. Right now, Alexander is too involved with the journey he's on to take time to read about the journeys of others. Ooh, I should write a book about this. That'll be fun. These shelves hold a selection of cookbooks. Okay. Alexander isn't interested in the cookbooks on that shelf. He's had an aversion to cooking ever since he experimented with a certain cookie recipe involving cat hair and fish oil. Oh, that was delicious. Can I talk to the books? Alexander would have to read the books to hear what they have to say. Oh, that's kind of cute. What's this one? Alexander is a little old for those children's books. Kids' book? You're never too old for Dr. Seuss. A collection of children's books fill those shelves. A plaque bearing a merchant crest hangs over the doorway. The bookshop owner must be proud of his credentials. Hmm, that must mean there's some sort of like a chamber of commerce around the land of the Green Isles. It looks like a... A fish, maybe? Can I take a closer look at it? Alexander has no ambition to set himself up as a merchant. No, nope, I guess not. There's a small table near the door that bears a sign. The sign has undergone a number of changes. It once read, ten pence. But that was crossed out and replaced with five pence. Then one pence. Then free. The sign currently reads, take one, please. Only one book remains on the table. It looks like the bookshop owner really wants to get rid of that book. I, I'm i not sure what the currency is in the Land of Green Isles, but I see... I, I don't think it's pence. I don't think they use the pounds in uh, the Land of the Green Isles, but I might be wrong. I don't actually think we get any money, so I'm not sure. What's the book? Alexander picks up the book from the small table. Oh, yes, please, take that book. You have my most humble thanks for doing so, good sir. Really? Thanks. All right, well, I got a point for getting it, but what is it? Alexander is carrying a book from the bargain table in the bookshop. I am indeed. All right, let's see. Alexander opens the bargain book and reads a paragraph at random. Two dulcimers raised to the degree of forty half dulcimers, divided into equal parts by the third of a cackle of grouse geese, put over the result of ten fine mackles, albeit small fine mackles, stretched over the total of fifty-three and an eighth bottles of wild beast lard. Mm. Ugh, that's a boring book. Phew, what an incredibly boring book. No wonder the bookshop owner wanted to get rid of it so badly. I kind of wonder what the topic of that book is. Does it have a title? Like, what is this whole dulcima thing? Alexander is carrying a book. No, it's just, it's just a book. I guess it doesn't have a cover. Huh. Weird. Maybe the bookkeeper can shed some light on it. Might I return this? Please, I had a hard enough time getting rid of that book in the first place. Nope, not going to tell us anything else about it. What's this uh, black book here? There's a book entitled The Changing Role of Court Entertainers Through the Ages on the small table in the reading area. It appears that some regular customer likes that book. Ah, 
And hopefully we'll run into him sooner or later. But first of all, we got some chatting to do. While the bookshop does not seem to invite conversation, Alexander might be better off addressing someone specific. Snap, crackle, pop. I just, I love that they give him these lines, and I love that he agreed to it. Can we talk to the book? How fair you, merchant? Well, I would be better if I could only finish my manuscript. I am a budding novelist, you know. All right, a budding novelist. Good, so he's writing a book. And, oh yeah, what was this book on the countertop? An antique leather-bound book is displayed on a little stand on the counter. On the elaborate cover is the title, Ye Useful Book of Magic Spells. Can I have it? How much for that book on the counter, merchant? It is a fine book, is it not? I obtained it from the estate of the one and only magician this kingdom has ever had. Poofed himself into an aardvark in the end, or so I heard. I never found the spells all that useful myself, but then I lead a boring life. I tell you what, if you can find another rare book, something a bit more marketable, I might be willing to exchange the spell book for it. Ah, good. All right, so we got a book quest. We got to find a rare book. And we're set with a book of magic spells, which will be very handy. Bye. All right, I don't think there's much else to do here. Have I talked to everything here? Hello. Is it no one? Yeah, yeah, I've already talked. I talked to the awning. Hello. No, okay. All right, so I gotta oh, find an old la lamp for him, yeah. Oh, can I play the flute? I love his little dance. Alexander plays a lovely little tune on the flute. I love how the animation changes depending on what direction Alexander. you're facing, too. They, they, just the, the level of detail that they go through, they don't have to, but they did. And I love it. Hello. Hmm, where are we now? Shadows of the house lay across the dusty path between the village and the sea. Alexander is standing on a dirt street leading through the village. To his right is a fine house with a private yard. The yard is surrounded by a gated fence and is full of red rose hedges. The street continues off to the northwest, from which direction Alexander can feel a light sea breeze. Just that little bit of extra spoken context really you puts you into the- Oh, hi. Thing. Get back to work and stay away from those roses! I've told you a million times, those flowers are too sweet for the likes of you! You've still got to do the breakfast dishes, make lunch, and clean the stables yet this morning! And get your veil back on! No one wants to look at your face! Yes, stepmother. Oh. I remember that was also a, a kind of a change from the, uh, the original version to this newer version. In the original version, she was actually very pretty. But in this one, she seems a little bit more, a little bit more plain, I suppose. It sort of harkened back to sort of the, uh, the wicked stepsister thing where, like, they were so pretty, they wanted to cover them up because they felt bad. And it's like, oh, they're going to like you more than they're going to like me. But this one, she is a little bit more plain Jane. So maybe, like, no one wants to see your face. It's like, okay, I guess I'm ugly. It's kind of sad. We'll get to meet her eventually. The house is made of stucco in an architectural style native to the island. It is apparently quite old since climbing vines embrace its exterior. A pot etched by the natural elements of the island decorates the porch. A low stone fence separates the private yard from the public path. Alexander is standing on... Well, uh, no one's looking. Rose is mine. Alexander has not been invited to pick the family's roses. Wow, you are way too honest for me, Alexander. Rocks abound on this lo- Palm trees, as graceful as gazelles, wave in the warm tropical breeze. Hey, palm tree, what you knowin'? The palm trees whisper in the slight breeze. Alexander can't see any way to hold a conversation with that. Oh, a generic one. Interesting. The roses don't have their own? Alexander is greeted with silence. 
Oh, maybe just on the first couple of scenes they really went all out and made everything interactable with the uh, with the talk icon, but not so much anymore. Squeak. <laughs> Squeak. Squeak. All right, there's not too much else I can do here, but what happens if I try to go in? Alexander doesn't want to intrude on private property unless he's been invited. You are just way too proper for me. Oh, hello. Hey, stranger, come join me. The water is wonderful, and I can show you the way to the next island. Really? Oh, you seem so trustworthy, my sparkling-eyed little friend. Let me just save for a second and we'll play. Good day. I'm Alexander. What are you doing in the sea? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm swimming. I mean, come join me. The water's wonderful. I can show you the way to the next island. Ah, okay. Hello. A young boy is happily swimming in the sea off the docks. Come join me if you're brave enough. All right, I won't say no. Considering the poor condition of the shore, it looks like the easiest way to get into the water is just to jump off the pier. Wee! Fully clothed! My cell phone! The powerful currents grab Alexander. Struggle as he might, he feels himself being pulled out to sea. Oh. <laughs> Not a very good swimmer, are you? <laughs> Help me! Sorry, I think not. <laughs> As his head submerges for the third time, Alexander finds himself pondering the wisdom of going out on a limb for a stranger. With my dying breath, I curse Zoidberg! Oh, but yes, my favorite death scene ever. Tickets up oh. next. Oh. Alexander couldn't handle those currents. That boy must be an unbelievably strong swimmer. Yep, no try again buttons here. If you don't save, you are messed up. I used to challenge myself way back when to uh, never save and make it through all the way without, uh, you know, without dying or having to worry about it. Pretty easy once you know your way around. Come on, jump in. A little water won't hurt you. I don't trust your enthusiasm. What are you waiting for? I said I'd show you how to get to the next island, didn't I? You know what? Um, fool me once, shame on me. Um, I don't trust you and your glinting eyes, so I'm just gonna sit over here. Oh. That's strange. The young boy in the water just disappeared. Oh well, perhaps he just dove under the water. Now what's also fun is that you can dive in anyway, even after he's gone and you know you're gonna die. The powerful currents grab Alex. The same thing happening, except the boy's not there to make fun of you. The currents around the island pull Alexander under. Alexander is standing at the island's docks. Both the pier and the only boat in sight are in sad repair. A worn wooden vessel has been dry docked on a jetty. The boat is in sad shape. A hole in the hull and the condition of its boards make it obvious that the vessel is no longer seaworthy. That's a shame. So, yeah, this ferry is not going to put us between all the different islands anytime soon. We need an alternate way. And that way is not, not only a way to say that there's uh, somebody working against you of a magical nature, but also that it is quite impossible to swim from one island to the other. Uh, or even taking a small boat might be a bit tricky with the currents being what they are. So I like that. Good mechanic. A wooden door leads to the interior of the boat's cabin. The boat does not reply. The ocean currents continue to murmur, but they do not reply to Alexander. The pier has nothing to talk about. I think they missed uh, an opportunity there. It's like, it doesn't appear it has anything to say. <laughs> oh, hire me, Sierra. Alexander's voice gets tossed around by the waves and is drowned out. All right, well, hello there, sailor. All right, I heard ya. Yeah, what do you want? Um, talk? Alexander promises himself that he will not go home until he has determined what Cosima's feelings are for him and if she needs his help. Uh, anyway. Excuse me, my name is Alexander. The owner of the bookshop in the village told me you might be able to help me. I hear you used to run this ferry for the islands. 
I'd like to talk to you if you have a moment. You say old Ali sent you? I can't see why. The ferry's not running, you know. I understand. I'd just like to talk to you about the islands if you don't mind. Well, I guess it'd be all right if Ali sent you. Well, don't just stand there. See, Come if Ali didn't send you and you just went up to him, this guy is a real dick to you. What is it you wanted to talk about, young man? All right, well, there's something there we need, but we'll we'll come back to that later. Let's take a look around. Alexander is sitting inside the ferry's cabin. The place displays the neatness of a seaman and the sparseness of a bachelor. There are few frills and comforts in the rough wooden environment, but the sunlight shines cheerily on the oaken beams, and the portholes admit a pleasant breeze. I, I, love, I love the spice. Several oil lamps are strategically placed around the boat's cabin to eliminate the island's dark nights. The ferryman's bunk looks hard and uncomfortable. No wonder he can be so cranky. A black pot-bellied stove in the corner provides warmth from the cool tropical nights and a means for cooking. A cabinet with a dry sink lines one wall of the cabin. A dry sink? Is that a thing? The ferryman seems to be the only one in the cabin to address. The stove gives Alexander the cold shoulder. Ah! Uh. The bunk has nothing to say. Oh, some pictures up there. Alexander is sitting inside. It looks Alexander's like a picture. Why can I look at? Oh well. The lamps chose not to illuminate Alexander. A table is positioned in front of two plain wooden chairs. The table consists of a board placed over a small barrel. There's a rabbit's foot on the table. A rabbit's foot? That's what that is. I can see that. The ferryman is a disgruntled looking man who is probably a lot younger than he appears. Despite his tired air, he watches Alexander patiently. Yeah, as I look and sort of paw around all his belongings. I'm a visitor to these islands. I'd like to learn what I can about the area. So you said outside. What is it you want to know? Well, for one thing, why has the island's only ferry been dry docked? Huh. It just ain't safe to sail these days. What with the islands feuding and all. Wazir al Hazred ordered the ferry closed till things settled down. Me? I don't think she'll ever see water again. <sighs> but why are the islands feuding? You got me. Something about stolen property or some such thing. Tis a real shame. Things used to be so friendly. Then this unrest is recent. A few years is all, but it's been long enough. Perhaps if the ferry were repaired... This old thing? This ferry's been out of water so long she's no longer even seaworthy. Her boards have dry rot. She'd fall apart at the first taste of seawater. But there must be some way to get off this island. There's only one other way to travel that I know of. A magic map. The owner of the pawn shop can tell you more about that than I can, Alexander. Did I tell you my name? I must have. Tell me more about the ferry. I remember when I used to ferry Bonk. Queen Alaria and Princess Cosima themselves. There was no thought of danger back then. They used to go visiting to care for the needy and to keep up the friendly relations between the islands. I remember their last trip. Things had started getting nasty by then, and when they came back aboard, I gathered that the Queen and the Princess had been received a bit coldly. Princess Cosima was such a pretty thing, and she was terribly upset. But who could be spreading these lies, she asked the Queen, but the Queen had no answer. Um, continue? What do you do now that the ferry no longer operates? Me? I'm out of a job. The job my ancestors have held for generations. I'm the only one trained to avoid the reef and the rocks. But that knowledge does me no good now. Is there no other boat on the island? One that might be more seaworthy? Boats don't last long on these shoals, as you may have found out if you got here by ship. You can be quite sure that this old ferry is, or was, the only craft on the island. Oh, let me tell you a story about my boat. You see... Actually, is there anything I can tell him? Yeah, maybe I can tell him about my journey with this. Would you be interested in this ring? I don't need charity. I won't take nothing from no man till I get back in business and can earn my own keep. All right, maybe we can help him out at some point. But anything else to say about this, uh, these islands? Tell me more about Princess Cosima. Ah, such a beautiful child. And so pure of heart. 
Why, a contrary thought has never crossed her mind. Her mother was the same. The king and queen. They served the islands, not the other way around. Always thinking about the people. Ah, <sighs> they are sorely missed. What else can you tell me about the land? Let's see. The Isle of Wonder's a lovely spot. A bit crazy, mind you. Gotta have a good sense of humor to enjoy a tour there. What else can you tell me about the land? The Isle of the Beast is pretty, but unfortunately, you can't get very far onto the island. What else can you tell me about the land? The inhabitants of the Isle of the Sacred Mountain are the most gorgeous creatures you'll ever see. If you ever get to see them, that is. What else can you tell me about the land? The Castle of the Crown sure is a beauty. She's the finest palace ever built, I'll warrant. Look, buddy, I'm running out of things to say. Is there something specific you want to ask me? What else can you tell me about the land? Some say that the land of the Green Isles is near the edge of the world, and that the deadly currents are a result of a magnetism that sucks life from this world to the next. Of course, that's just silly talk. Um, that sounds serious. What else can you tell me about the land? Let's see. The Isle of Wonder's a lovely spot. A bit crazy, man. All right, so he's just repeating itself at this point. Uh, listen, um, you're great and all, and I appreciate your hospitality, but can we have your lucky rabbit's foot? I see you have a rabbit's foot. Has it brought you much luck? As you can see, my luck's been out for some time now, despite that old charm. Why don't you take it with you? Perhaps giving the darn thing away will bring me good fortune at last. Perhaps it will at that. Thank you. Yay! I bet it's a real rabbit's foot, too. The rabbit's foot has long, soft fur. I wonder how that stupid, uh, little superstition began. Like, was it always, like, a legitimate, real rabbit's foot? Or was it always, like, sort of a rabbit fur charm? I don't get it. Well, bye. The old sea salt is a little crusty around the edges. Alexander would rather keep his hands to himself. Well, I think I'll be going now. Thanks for allowing me into your home. Posh, not at all. It breaks the boredom, if you know what I mean. <sighs> well, bye forever. Um, I'm not sure if there's ever a reason I need to talk to him again, but, you know, once you have sort of uh, an inn to go see him. He's a perfectly nice guy. But uh, yeah, God help you if he, uh, you talk to him without an invitation. Okay, so we learned that the pawn shop owner has something called a magic map, which we need to get our hands on. Oh, hello Good again. Day. I recognize you. Good day, sir. The old man just glares at Alexander and does not reply. Hmm. Well, as long as we're here. A strange-looking winged device occupies one corner of the room. It is frail with disuse. Alexander finds it intriguing. Perhaps he thinks it was once used in a local sporting event, in which enthusiasts jumped from cliffs, glided on air currents, and then attempted to land, frequently crunching a bone or two in the process. Alexander uh shudders at the thought and decides to stick to dragon slaying. Alexander, you have a great imagination. The wings have long been silent. Alexander prefers to keep his leather jerkins firmly on the ground. Leather jerkins? Isn't that... I thought a jerkin was like a shirt. It sounds like they meant shoes. Oh, well. Whatever. All right. Excuse me, merchant, but the ferryman mentioned that you might have a magic map of the land of the Green Isles. Why, as a matter of fact, I do. I keep it under the counter. It's been gathering dust so long that I nearly forgot about it. It was quite a few years ago, you see. The estate of a wealthy wizard fell into my hands when he died. It was useless magical junk mostly, which reminds me, I've still got some things of his in the back that I need to dump out. Anyway, the magic map was the one true treasure in the lot. The wizard was quite old and feeble, and had enchanted the map to aid in traveling. It is said that one need only desire to be on an island depicted on the map to find oneself there. It is a very valuable map, as you can imagine. Unfortunately, no one is interested in traveling these days. It is far too dangerous with the current state of the kingdom. What would you take for the map? I would normally want something magic in return, 
But since I am hardly overrun with prospective buyers, I would be willing to take anything of equal value in exchange. All right, so finally, a use for our super ultra mega expensive ring. Would you be willing to take my family oh. ring in exchange for the magic map? Daventry, are you a king then? No, that's my father, King Graham. I'm just Alexander. Well, Prince Alex, she is a beautiful ring. Are you sure you can part with such a unique family heirloom? The ring does mean a lot to me. I didn't always have a family, you know. Still, we can make another it is one. only gold. There are more important things at stake now. Then you now own a magic map, Prince Alex. I will keep your ring out of sight for a few days. If you find anything else of great value in your travels, you can come back for your ring. I would hate to see it melted down for gold. Ah, and a warning about the map. It will only operate when you are out in the open and within sight of the sea. The limitation has something to do with the teleport spell ingredients. You might try the beach. Thank you. You are very kind. And I'll remember about the map. Up. Uh. Don't pick my pocket. Suddenly, the old man in the concealing cloak sneaks past Alexander, and with a sneaky dart of his hand, steals a mint from the candy jar. It's not stealing, they're free. Don't point him out to be a bad guy. The old man stuffs the mint into his mouth and wobbles unsteadily out of the pawn shop. Oh, all right. These must be stronger mints than I thought. Master! I follow Prince Alexander as you wished. From the pawn shop owner, he just abstained. I just reprieved. He just got a magic map. Uh, thump. You fool. You've been eating those mints again. I ordered you to stop that. Yes. Master! Glint. Now, what is this about a magic map? With a map, Prince Alexander could travel anywhere as quickly as... Uh, quickly as I can. I thought I took care of the only means of travel. By my scimitar, I can't have him stirring things up now. Get a hold of yourself and listen carefully, Shamir. Go to the other islands and tell them... What? No, tell them! Okay, so that was telling. So A, the genie is the guy with the glint who's trying to kill me and follow me around. Wow, big surprise. The uh, wazir is evil, also huge surprise. But now as a consequence of this, um, he's being sent to all the different islands to tell them something. Probably telling them that uh, this guy in this green jerkin running around is a real jerk and you should probably kill him. But whatever, I have a magic map. The magic map is made of thin leather and has lifelike drawings of the islands on its uneven surface. All right, nothing I can do with it in here. Let's go take it outside and give it a spin. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, little birdie bird. A nightingale perches on a high branch of the tree. She sings the most beautiful song Alexander has ever heard. Hmm, even better than my flute playing? Hello, Nightingale. What a lovely tune you sing. The Nightingale only looks at Alexander suspiciously and continues to sing. Hmm. All right, that little bird will also be handy later, but not yet. All right, let's take this magic map out for a spinnerooski. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Boy, you're going to hear these lines a lot. Okay, so here is the layout of the islands. Smaller than I thought. So you got Out of the Crown, Wonder, which looks kind of like a comma or an apostrophe. The Island of the Sacred Mountain, which is pretty cool. And when you click on them, you get sort of like a uh, topographical kind of look at it. And why did you put it on the ground, Alex? That's really rude. The Island of the Beast, and then there's sort of the shadowy mass over here. Heavy mists shroud an area to the southeast on the magic map. 
There's a small island labeled Isle of the Beast on the east side of Alexander's map. Six, six, six. A large island named the Isle of the Sacred Mountain dominates the north of the land of the Green Isles. Let me guess, this is somewhere in the west. According to the magic map, the Isle of Wonder is a comma-shaped island poised in the sea to the west. Comma, 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 chameleon. The Isle of the Crown lies at the south of the map. The map bears the title, The Land of the Green Isles. An ornate compass marker directs the bearer of the map. The magic map lays out what Alexander assumes is the whole of the land of the Green Isles. The distinctive islands are separated from each other by the Deadly Sea. The Deadly Sea. See, there's mist down here, but it also looks like there's mist here and there, like there are other hidden islands, but I think it's just uh, the island of mists down there. We can't go to the Isle of Wonder yet, uh, and I'll tell you why as soon as we go back to the pawn shop, but we can take a quick visit to the Island of the Sacred Mountain, and I think the Beast as well. Actually, no, we can go to the Isle of Wonder, we just can't go in a specific direction. Uh, let's go here first. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Ooh, it's a sensation altogether new to me, and I love it. See, this is what I love about the Isle of the Sacred Mountain. As soon as you get here, you get like two obvious things you need. Oh, right, yeah, well, we still, yeah. Oh, ah, sorry, it's all coming back to me now. It's been a long time. Where are we? The ocean appears calm, but there's a dimpling pattern to the surface, which indicates a strong undertow. Alexander is standing on the small sandy cove of a rocky island. Around him, sheer granite cliffs block any further movement north, east, or west. To the south, he is blocked by the sea. There appears to be no way past the cliffs. Though roughly hewn, the cliffs do not provide regular handholds for climbing, and they seem otherwise impenetrable. Alexander notices an unusually large, coal-black feather lying on the beach. I'll take that. Does it say anything? The feather does not respond. The cliffs ignore Alexander. The sound of Alexander's voice doesn't seem to have any effect on the cliff etchings. The flower does not respond. Alexander takes the feather. There's an ugly flower growing near the base of the cliff. I'll take that as well. Mine. Alexander picks the flower and is startled by its hideously strong skunk-like odor. For a moment, he can smell nothing else. All right, I guess we avoided it for as long as we can. There appears to be something etched into the face of the cliff. Alexander decides to get closer. All right, ignorance kills... Wisdom elevates. Now, the King's Quest game, I think all versions, came with this little pamphlet called The Guide to the Land of the Green Isles, which Jane Jensen also wrote. But the solutions to all the Cliffs of Logic puzzles uh, are in there. So it's basically the copy protection. But I've been through this so many times. Let me see if I can get through all of the puzzles um, without even looking at the manual. I know this one. Uh, so ignorance kills, wisdom elevates, rise, R-I-S. Huge blocks of stone erupt from the granite cliffs. Alexander stares with wonder. That's quite a way to welcome a guest, if indeed it is a welcome. Seems pretty welcoming to me. Large boulders have pushed their way from the cliffs to form a rough staircase. All right, up we go. And the, the cliffs of logic, I think, are pretty forgiving. As long as you click somewhere near the boulders, you're fine. But I think if you click, like, wrong... Oh, no. Wrong, Alexander loses his balance. Whoa! 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 Oh! <laughs> hey! What? Who are you saying hey to? Me? I'm sorry. And I think if you do that one too many times, it will kill you. Or actually, no, I think you can fall as many times as you want on this level, and you're fine. But if you fall from anything above that, you're screwed. Oh, no. Whoa! 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 Hey, quit making me fall. Ah, <laughs> never. All right, these other ones might be harder because I think they're symbol-based and you need like a key to do so. But let's see if I remember the order. Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. 
Uh, I want to say I, I know it's this one and then this one. Let's see if muscle memory will serve me well. Uh, um, I remember the solution is a master of languages will soar. And then each of these is sort of like a cross index for uh, a letter of the alphabet. But I thought it was like, thought it was like this, 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 and this. Maybe it's a different order. No, I guess not. Well, let's go back down. Shortcut. Aww. That wasn't a very logical step. Cute. All right, so we'll leave this here, and then I have the manual around somewhere, and I'm, I'm sure it's online some, uh, or whatever. We'll, we'll find it. Ew, the map does not look good. All right, where else can we go? Um, we can pay a visit to the Isle of Wonder. You know what? Yeah, why not? Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. In his pants. Okay, so the Isle of Wonder is one of my favorite places to be. There's a lot we can do. What's all this then? The blue ocean stretches on for as far as Alexander can see. Alexander is standing on a rocky beach. To the north is dense tropical vegetation. Near the shore are a dozen or so oyster beds. Yeah. A string of letters floats in the water. The letters spell out, where are you going? Alexander's heard of alphabet soup, but this is ridiculous. Oh. One of the oysters is sitting up in bed and doesn't look very happy. He seems to be the only one who can't sleep. Mm. In oh, the oyster's mouth, Alexander can see a glint of white. Now, if we go this way, uh, we have a puzzle to face. I don't think we're equipped to win yet, but I think we're allowed to go this direction without being stopped. Alexander hears someone coming. I lied. Oh, time for my favorite characters. I'm fierce guards of the Isle we be. Watch for a foreign man, said he. With ears and nose, tongue, hands and eyes. Its nature cannot be disguised. If man it be, then man it dies. Old Tom Troll, smell your smell. Do that which you do so well. Okay, so this is pretty obvious. So these guys represent the five senses. There's uh, smell, hearing, taste, touch, and then eyes. And then for whatever reason, eyes always comes last. So really obviously he could just look, but he keeps his eyes closed until you get up next to him. So uh, it seems kind of wacky. So this guy's going to take a big old whiff of me and see if I'm a guy or not. A gnome with a huge nose stands before Alexander. I can't talk to him. That's a shame. Alert, my brothers, as we feared. A man, a man has landed here. A man, a man so sad nose. Into the waiting sea he goes. Uh-oh. So yes, indeed, the uh, the genie went to all the islands to say, "Hey, there's a guy that's going to appear. If there's a guy that pops up, you should probably kill him." The gnomes toss Alexander too far out into the sea for him to get his footing. The currents drag him under. Guess those gnomes couldn't reach a consensus. Ah, uh, I see what you did there. Okay, so this is kind of a fun little overarching puzzle because there's an item that you need for each one of the to fool each one of the five senses to fool the nose i think this flower is what we need and then there's a couple other little dipsy doos and i think i was also in error of getting the flute first i needed something else first anyway we'll come back to that so this will be our big mission for next time but oh this thing's floated close enough for me to grab it might as well alexander picks up the object floating in the water it appears to be a string of letters. They say, where are you going? Alexander decides to keep the odd sentence, even though it is incomplete. Yeah, it's a little bit grammatically incorrect, but uh, we'll, we'll find out why soon. Alexander is carrying, oddly enough, a sentence. It says, where are you going? Yeah, something kind of 
not quite finished about that sentence. This kind of leaves it hanging there, doesn't it? Okay, so uh, next time, we I think we might have everything we need uh, coming up shortly to defeat all the guards. But I'd like to show all the different deaths that you can get with all the different uh, gnomes. So that'll be a fun little thing to do next time. And then we can find out what's wrong with this poor little oyster down here. But until then, as always, good night, jelly beans. Good night.